The pilot in command has the legal right to order her thrown her off the plane in mid-flight if needed. To protect the aircraft, duct tape is mild by comparison. Well, I guess it's time we talk about the aviation experts on Twitter. Coming up. Hey 74 crew, welcome back. If you don't know me, my name's Kelsey. I'm a 747 pilot. My channel, 74 Gear, is all about aviation. After I did the TikTok roast, I had a bunch of DMs from people saying, I can't believe kids nowadays, they are so stupid. The thing is, is there's a lot of people when they were younger, they didn't have TikTok to say dumb things. Those people are now on Twitter. Twitter, like the TikTok for old people. If you see something like that on Twitter and you're wondering, is that even real? The easiest thing to do is either just tag me in the post or take a picture of it, send it to my Instagram, and then I'll take a look at it. And who knows, maybe it'll end up here. Now, I will tell you right now, it is super bright outside. So if you see me squinting during that video, that's why. Let's get into it. American Airlines passenger was duct taped to her seat after she tried to open the plane door, then bit a flight attendant. She endangered the crew and the passengers. Duct tape seems like a reasonable option for an unreasonable situation. I agree. Typically I fly cargo and in situations like this, it reminds me how thankful I am to not have to deal with this type of stuff. But when I do passenger flying, I'm usually flying our military troops who are deploying or coming back to the US and I've never had anything even remotely like this. The other types of people that I fly are professional charters. So um, professional sports players and things like that that are going to games. And again, these people are getting paid a lot of money to do what they do very well. And they're not going to ruin that by trying something stupid like trying to open a door or being misbehaving or anything on the plane. So those are usually the two types of passengers that I'm flying. So this is typically not a major concern that I have while I'm flying. But I tell myself that if I were doing these things, I'd be dropping these on the regular. My even though we're never allowed to do that. Because for safety reasons, the pilots are meant to be flying the plane and not doing John Wayne stuff in the cabin area. You're not gonna see pilots going back and tackling passengers or things like that in real life. But uh, that's what I tell myself I would be doing if it were to happen. And that's why it makes it so funny to me when Kelly says something like, the pilot in command has the legal right to order her, thrown her off the plane in mid-flight if needed to protect the aircraft. Duct tape is mild by comparison. The best part about that obviously is Kelly saying that we're allowed to basically yeet people off a plane mid-flight. Now, I don't know if that is a pilot and captain responsibility to depressurize the plane and then what door they're supposed to take them to, to, to yeet them off the plane and throw them off the plane. I don't, I don't know how that breaks down as far as who gets to do that or do they just delegate that to one of the junior flight attendants. I'm sure there's probably a passenger or two in the back that has been dying to do something like that. So I'm not sure how that delegation happens, uh, but joking aside, nobody's getting thrown off a plane mid-flight. And I know what you're thinking. No, Kelsey, she didn't actually mean in flight like while in the air. That's not what she meant. So in response, someone says, you must mean the captain can land and have the passenger removed because no captain is allowed to yeet passengers into the void. And then the same lady says, yes, the captain is allowed to do exactly that. The pilot in command can order any necessary thing to protect the aircraft or its crew or passengers. And for those of you who don't know the slang term yeet, it's basically to throw something really quickly. So Kelly's right in the sense that the crew is allowed to do whatever they can in order to protect the aircraft. Absolutely. In this scenario, probably what would happen is the flight attendants would get some what they call able-bodied people in the back to help them wrestle somebody down or do something like this. And you've seen all the videos of that stuff. They would get somebody like that and get them and hold them from being able to do something crazy like try to break down the door or try to open the plane door or try to access the flight deck or any of those types of things. So they're able to do that. However, the pilots aren't coming out of the flight deck to handle that situation. Now, if Boeing was to come up with the design to handle the Karens that are in the sky right now, I'm thinking like a, a, a cannon on the plane where you put somebody in there, right? I mean, obviously you give them a parachute, but you put them in there and then you get a big red button that the captain has to be the only one that can push it, right? You put them in that cannon and then right before he says, welcome to the no fly list, like a 1990s movie and then like hits the red button and like shoots them out. If they had something like that, that would be pretty cool. That escalated quickly. It's a long established principle of the maritime law that the master of a vessel has life or death authority over everyone on it. 
This principle applies to aircraft. Your refusal to accept this does not make it any less true. Man, all this time I thought I was just a stupid pilot and now I realize I can just basically start murdering people Hunger Games style in my plane and go, hey, they were on my aircraft, I can do whatever I want. But my favorite part about this is where she says your refusal of it doesn't make it any less true. Not backed by facts, but just your refusal because she knows, I'm guessing because she's a aviation expert like everybody else on TikTok and Twitter. My immune system is weakening because of this artificial cirrus cloud by these trails. Why would you do this to us? What did we ever do to you? What if human-induced global warming doesn't even exist? That's a lot of questions to ask. I think what this aviation expert is talking about is the contrails. Basically, when a plane's flying in certain atmospheric conditions, it has those lines, those white lines that are behind it. He's calling them cirrus clouds, but he's referring to that. This is a picture of what cirrus clouds look like, and then this is a picture of what a contrail looks like. So he's saying that these contrails are cirrus clouds as far as what I can tell. While I agree that planes do use fossil fuels and there is a pollution impact of the fossil fuels from those planes, the reality is, is that the jets aren't the biggest cause of a user of fossil fuels. That comes from cars. So the next time you order your Uber Eats into your basement, just let them know what they're doing to damage the environment. I'm sure they're gonna wanna have a very long and lengthy conversation with you about it. Y'all, American Airlines just canceled everyone's flight and one of their agents said it's because the pilots went on strike. I'm just guessing because this woman said, y'all, she's down in Texas, American Airlines, Texas, makes sense. Anyway, the reality is, is that pilots don't just call up each other and go like, hey, Frank, uh, we didn't get that pay raise we wanted. We're gonna go on strike tomorrow. All right, let's do it. That's not how it works. It's gonna be a long process where they're gonna be talking. It's gonna be all over the press because the pilots union is gonna be putting out all kinds of stuff like, hey, we're going on strike next Thursday. That's how that works. It's not just a all of a sudden surprise thing that happens. The pilots will be picketing for months before and then they'll be putting press articles out of there. So if you're ever wondering, are your pilots going on strike? One, it's gonna be in the news. And two, if you just Google it, you said whatever airline, pilots on strike. If you don't see anything that's on there in the last month, your pilots aren't going on strike. That's just not how it works. With everything that's going on with COVID and all the people coming back and demanding air travel again, the airlines have been struggling to get caught up and get everything back in place to get planes and people moving. It takes a long time to wind that up and to slow it down. So when COVID happened, a lot of people thought, oh man, this is gonna go on for a while. A lot of people took early retirements. A lot of people took long leave of absences. There was a lot of stuff. And then all of a sudden, just kind of overnight, everybody was like, I wanna go fly again. And so it's been really a hot mess for a lot of people trying to get places and just the normal situation that you would have, normal maintenance and normal crew situations, it's that, but just multiplied by a lot. I'm guessing that there was some miscommunication between the gate agent and this woman who tweeted all of this, or if that is the case that the gate agent is grossly misinformed because there, there is no strike that the pilots can just randomly go on without any type of permission, that's just not how it works. But then this was kind of funny, the person's reply to that. John says the average salary of a pilot in the US is about 140,000 annually. Do you know how fed up you have to be to turn that type of pay down? Then it's followed up by another aviation expert saying, they're not allowed to fly more than 70 hours a month. Depending what airport they were at, they may have been too far from a crew base to get pilots available, especially since everybody has a different type rating to fly different types of planes. What's exciting for me here is not the fact that these people are giving false information and incorrect information, it's that they're doing essentially exactly what Hollywood does, which is get one or two pieces of facts and then just jam it in with a bunch of other stuff that has no facts behind it and no way to verify, verify that information and then just touting it as pure, honest facts. This is not true. First, it takes a long time to get up to making $140,000 a year. Flight school is expensive. After flight school, a lot of people are flight instructors. They're not making 140,000 a year. After being a flight instructor for several years, making probably 40 grand a year, you go to a regional. At a regional, you're not making 140,000 a year as a first officer. Then you're there for a couple of years. And then you're a captain at a regional typically for a couple of years. And you're not gonna make 140,000 there either. And then after that, 
you might get to an airline where you would make 140,000 years on your second or third year working there. So once you get up to that level of you're working at an airline that you're making 140,000 on the high end, you'll see guys that are making 300,000. So once you get to a major airline or flying bigger aircraft, 140 to 300, I'd say that's kind of like the average in the US, depending on how hard you work and what role you're in and what kind of aircraft you're flying. But that's a typical range. Now the part where he says that we're limited to 70 hours per month, here's the thing. On average, I would say your average line pilot that's flying a normal schedule, probably 60 to 70 hours per month, that's probably an average of what you're doing. But it's not a limitation. You're not limited to only 70 hours per month. And I joked about earlier about how Twitter is now like the TikTok for the old people, but these older people should know there's this thing called Google, and then you can get in there and just type in your question and it will literally give you the information. Luckily, I'm willing to type in that word and get the question answered for you and it shows you right here in a 28 day period, they cannot fly over 100 hours. There are different rules for different countries. There are different rules for the type of flying that you're doing, whether you're flying cargo or passengers, there's different rules. There's different rules that if you're flying just for fun, if you're doing a repositioning flight, there's a bunch of different rules, but for what they're referring to, airline passenger flying pilots, those are the rules. So quickly on Google, you can get most of the questions you want answered. Now, if you want to see me roast some people on TikTok, check out this video. And if you want to see me roast some people in Hollywood, check out this video. I look forward to hearing from you. Until then, keep the blue side up.